So the main thing I want you guys to take away is, even though it is good to have a contract, even if you do not have a contract, you mediate. As long as you have some sort of proof that we can use within the mediation, some sort of paperwork, it can be something as simple as bank transfers to show that money was passed for the payment of a particular service. It can be a message from WhatsApp. It can be phone calls, any sort of thing to show that, listen, we made some sort of agreement, right? We do not necessarily need to see the details of the agreement, but first things first, that the agreement was made. The second thing that you would have to remember is that mediation is voluntary. Your contractor has to be willing to mediate. If they are not willing to mediate and come to a result with you, unfortunately, you would have to seek legal advice and see what steps in for litigation. I will say construction disputes within mediation has been a rise since the COVID-19 pandemic. Reason being, well, we all know the construction sector would have been closed for a considerable period of time. And every one who had work going on essentially had to stop. So that left persons in a bit of a predicament because persons did not have contracts set up. They did not have that dispute resolution clause. They did not cater for acts of gross major, as we would say in, in contract law within that clause, right? So overall, yes, Islin, you can seek mediation. If you are interested, you can see the information at the top of the chat box. You can contact our office for a consultation. We will definitely deliver help. And let's see where we can get started there. Now, what, what I would say for those types of matters, yes, we can have the mediation and we can come to an arrangement, but it's not going to be a quick result. You may always see those what we will call high ticket items in the mediation sphere, right? Construction involves a lot of money most times. And you, may, if a contractor has not completed the job, they may not be able to complete it right away. So in your agreement, you also have to make provisions. Well, the mediator, myself, we will do that. Make provisions to say, okay, well, we agree for the work now to be completed over a six-month period, over a nine-month period. I just want to bring up your, I want to bring that to your attention because sometimes I've seen it. A lot of people think that because I get a mediation done today and we agree on this, everything must be done by next week or tomorrow. It, it doesn't work like that. And to me, I think that's an effect of mediation. It works with you in mind. You get to decide how you want this to turn out with the other person, of course, right? So that's, again, that's a very good question. And another popular part would be the sale of goods in Trinidad and Tobago. Again, coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen a lot of issues around the supply chain, right? Shipments coming in very late, or we're just not receiving it at all, or just a, a, a slower process. That helps a lot, right? Larger companies who stand to lose millions often seek mediation or arbitration, which is another form of dispute resolution to resolve these issues. It gives them a faster resolve than it would take for them to go through the court process. And it allows them, as I said, a specific outcome. There's a lot of other different factors surrounding like the sale of items and the sale of goods. We have a lot of different documents to look over. Maybe you might decide for someone to bring in for example, again, like a shipment in April, one in May, one in June. My point is mediation can help with all that. There is no limit to what I've seen so far that you can not put in into your agreement. So I'm seeing Alicia said, if you hire an attorney to represent you before the courts and you made a deposit, the receipt shows exactly what is required, but the lawyer fails to meet you, take calls, what can be done? That's a very interesting question. I do not think mediation would be able to help you in, in that aspect. I believe you are supposed to exhaust your resources in terms of communicating with the attorney. Perhaps maybe you can try visiting their office or contacting them again. And if that does not work out, I will suggest you seek other advice to know your best steps going forward. 
Um, there's a lot of different avenues that you can choose to go forward there, but we can also help depending on the scenario. So if you'd like, you can also contact our office to book a consultation and we can see how best we can assist because that area is a little bit tricky once an attorney is on record on for you in a particular matter. All right, I hope that was helpful. Right, so I was saying that there are different, um, okay, Denise says, can mediation help with property settlements after divorce? Most definitely, most definitely. Um, but I will say that once you have your divorce and it's done, obviously, legally, you have to, usually that comes up in court. You decide on the property settlement, right? However, some parties choose to renege on that. They want to change their minds and they want to go against what was previously decided. Now, you can do this with both attorneys. So both parties can have their attorneys agree to this and you seek mediation as well. So just because you are doing mediation, that does not mean that your attorneys cannot be present, right? Your mediator could be the person that is facilitating that conversation between both parties to reach that solution to figure out how are we settling the property? How are we dividing this particular asset or assets? And once you come to that agreement, you can use what was discussed in mediation and the mediation agreement, and your attorneys can make a new agreement and put forward a legally binding agreement. It is important to note that a mediation agreement is not legally binding, but your agreement that your attorney prepares for you is legally binding. So in this instance, yes, your mediator can help you with property settlement after divorce. So excellent question there. And you know, with mediation and contracts, it's very helpful even before something happens or after, right? Before you enter into any agreement, any any opportunity, anything where you have to spend money or it's a huge decision, please seek some advice, right? Or you can try to have that agreement done beforehand. Similarly with after. Eon says, does a mediator need to have experience in FIDIC? Uh, can you just send back what word you were saying there before contracts to mediate a construction matter? And what does it mean to facilitate a mediation meeting? Can you elaborate? Thank you. So I'll answer the latter question first and give you a chance to clarify the first question. To facilitate a mediation meeting basically means to host or to have a mediation meeting, right? I am the facilitator, meaning I am literally facilitating you. However, there's also a style of mediation that's called facilitative mediation, right? Think of me as, I always love to use this analogy as your referee. I am the person in the middle, right? And I am allowing both parties to have their chance to put forward their views, their opinions, their ideas, right? It can look different ways every single time. I've never conducted any two mediations that look similar to each other, right? So sometimes it can be, okay, we decide from upfront, party A is going to speak for about five minutes, party B is going to do the same, right? You can decide if you don't want to speak at all for a period of time, you write down what you think are the issues, you pass it to me, I read them, move on, and I guide the questions accordingly. So mediation, facilitating a mediation is really about figuring out what works best for parties and being that neutral person to do that. 